Hello friends, did you have a happy holiday, a good Christmas and all that stuff? Um, mine was pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so, just gonna jump right in. This is gonna be the prototypical Neo Toy Story Second Life Exploration. Yeah, I know I said I was going to do a show every Wednesday, but um, that just happened to be like one of the Christmas days, so I was busy doing Christmassy stuff and I didn't have time to actually log into Second Life and do my usual show, so that's why I'm doing it today on Friday. You know, of course, Thursday is like the day after everything and you're just kind of unwinding and stuff and I had work of course too. Dude, this is a cool cluster of four sims. I think that's a Linden a Linden build though. That's what it looks like. Some kind of I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to ch check this out. Even though it looks so typical. I'm just gonna go here for the hell of it if it'll let me. No, not access. That's that's kind of lame. Oh yeah, by the way, it's time to finally change my group N notifier. Because uh, LEA, as far as I know, doesn't exist anymore. So now I'm just... Just good old Neo Toy story now, not uh, LEA sandbox artist. I don't know, LEA might still exist. I haven't... Uh, I haven't messaged any of the people who uh, were responsible for that. I'm sure Pat Patricia Ann is still out there somewhere doing Second Life stuff. Oh, look at this. Marvel. Some Mega Prim. Like, so incoherent. Like, the Marvel logo, Sunburst, then the name of the sim is Amazon Lodge. Oh, oh, it's probably like uh, Wonder Woman. I'm kind of tempted. I'm tempted, but you know, my policy now is to find the most bizarre and fascinating sims in Second Life and not just focus on the boring run-of-the-mill stuff. This looks kind of interesting. Repulse. So the it looks kind of like a moonscape or a desert. It's not like the typical texture, so uh, no valid parcel. So that, that sim may not even exist anymore. Sometimes that happens. Someone will like abandon a sim and it stays on the as a thumbnail on the map for a while before it disappears. Kind of sad. You just have to think about like there's more mega prims. Like just imagine all the sims throughout the history of Second Life over a decade of of sims that are like programmable matter, right? I mean, you can just build anything you want on those sims. And you don't know who's building on them or what they're building. Quantum, huh? Quantum products. Oh, right, right. This is a big manufacturer in Second Life. I've uh, seen their stuff. They do, like, s cool sci-fi stuff. Uh, I'm almost tempted to go there, but I think that would be a little too much like an endorsement. Or, I don't know. I just feel uncomfortable interacting directly with commercial products. If I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. Coral Cove, Coral Ridge, Coral Sunrise. Somebody likes coral. Cabu. Look at these giant mega perm structures here. This could be anything. I'm going to try. I'm going to try it. Oh, no valid parcel. Huh. I wonder... It's possible that a lot of parcels um, were abandoned, like recently you know because it's sort of the new year transition it makes me want to give a shout out to this uh, person i follow on twitter although i don't remember what her name is but she does this absolutely phenomenal assessment of the grid like the health like she monitors new sims as they're created and old sims as they are retired or abandoned and uh she keeps track of all these metrics and statistics and Linden's Sims as well, which is like a whole separate thing, right? Because it's like they're kind of the 
architects and owners of everything so they have sort of their own special territory in in second life some of it's just what it's called maintenance land which i might show you in a minute i'm going to see what this is seone 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 i don't know all right looks like we got a hit true to form good old neo toy story is rezzing underwater and flying isn't turned off, so that's good. Wow, okay, this is cool. This is really cool. I'm excited already. This looks like a mine shaft or a like a nuclear weapons silo or something, or a, some kind of borehole. I don't know, it's really cool. Let's see if there's any like elevators. And look at this cave system, like wow, this is cool. Um, I love how clean it is. It's su super clean. But like, uh, in like a very, like, well thought out way. Like, I really, just very much appreciating the, the quality here. This reminds me very much of like some Star Wars maps from some of the early LucasArts like Dark Forces games. One thing I'll point out that's kind of cool that you see in Second Life all the time are textures that have been lifted from other video games, particularly a lot of the ones during the 90s, which back when things were a lot more simple back then, and it, it was really easy to uh, extract textures from from 90s video games. So a lot of times you'll actually see textures from like Star Wars games or uh, you know whatever else doom and quake and all those golden age games so i'm just gonna fly around oh yeah right right i want to change the sun settings because i've noticed it's been like too dark in a lot of the sims that i've gone to yeah that's much better i mean i like the atmosphere gliding like they pick the colors really well but <clears throat> unfortunately like Uh, it's not much of a show if people can't see what I'm looking at. So this is kind of interesting. This hanger. They're all hanger 01. I got lazy with the texture mapping and it's all kind of like uh, just clone textures. Yeah, these very much look like textures from Doom or Quake or Unreal. Wow, look at the normal map on here. That's phenomenal. Like, this really looks like a 3D staircase like straight up 3d but it's just a ramp that's kind of cool so yeah i don't know oh okay here we go here's a ship of some sort oh this is like a sim for people who are living ships or something <laughs> that would be kind of cool is he like smoking a cigarette or does he have a missile clamped in his jaws that's kind of neat what does this say on here keep clear do you, oh maybe this is a oh it's a minigun that's firing okay so this is some kind of like drone war drone that's kind of cool i don't know if these things are supposed to like live in these hangars or what it's kind of interesting Got another oh there there we go. There's some like real 3D stairs. It tricked me there for a second. I thought it was a I thought it was another normal map. So I'm gonna give this like a B plus in terms of build quality. I feel like it's pretty pretty nice, but also pretty basic. I'm gonna give it an A for like uh the terraforming I thought the ter terraforming was like exceptional like really well done in that, that river area so that's a lot of work so the problem with this build so far is it's just like one quarter module that's cloned four times to make this big area that's not really very exciting looks like I can't get through that airlock so yeah it's once you've seen one quarter, you've seen all the quarters, pretty much. So I'm just going to fly out of this hole and see if there's anything out here. 
the top. So this is cool. This is, uh, yeah, this is really cool. So there's this, like, landscape here, barren landscape, which is, you saw from the thumbnail above. It's Betty up in the city taught me to never finish this place down here. Oh, so Efrit is like working on the on the build. He's he's like the creator. That's cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly back down there and see if I can. Ugh, I can't get, I can't get through this. It's like a. Uh, I'm not going to be able to te teleport through there. Now I see what he was talking about, about not finishing the... Finishing down there. Great, I'm trapped. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get out of here. Ugh, I flew down a hole and now I can't get out again. Classic. But luckily there's like a really easy way to... Get out of here usually. Yeah, I just teleported back into the... Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find that Ifrit guy again. Uh, he f he flew off. Mm. God, I don't really remember how to do this shouting thing. Uh. God, I've, it's so long since I've done any like chat stuff on on here. Oh, cool, cool. Give me a teleport. Oh yeah, he wasn't joking. This is pretty awesome up here. So, Ifrit, you're like the uh, the creator of this whole place? Hi, hi. Can you, can you hear my voice chat? I, I just kind of assumed you did. Okay, cool. Uh, you hear all, every single sound on the sim. So this is pretty rad. This is like a cyberpunk kind of sci-fi city type thing going on here. Is that, is that what I'm getting? Oh, cool. Four years, huh? Nice. Well, uh, just in case you didn't know or not, but uh, I uh, I do this like weekly show on YouTube. It's like a live stream where I just go to random Sims, and uh, yeah, so that's I picked your Sim at random today. So it's really cool to actually get to meet the creator of the Sim. I uh, I hope you don't mind me just like walking around and taking a look at stuff. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, if there's anything special you want to, like, point out, I'm just going to, like, f uh, friend you right now. And if you want to, like, point anything out or whatever, just uh, go for it. I'll be, I'll just be wandering around and stuff. <laughs> I try to be kind of objective when I'm, uh, when I'm doing these sim tours instead of uh instead of like uh being biased in any way so <laughs> it's it's cool to uh to meet the creator but um also I have to be fair and objective just FYI <laughs> Yeah actually I'm pretty impressed so far I mean I've seen hundreds and hundreds of sims and I've seen a fair portion of sci-fi sims um, and this one so far is ranking pretty rating pretty high so like how long did it take you to build build this uh, masterpiece here So like modules that you kind of just 
piece together to create your own unique environment, sort of. Cool. So what's ah cool yeah I know it's hard right because when people sell texture packs or whatever I mean you just never know always what's in there or where where they came from it's hard to distinguish between unique creations and things that have been extracted from other games I mean not that I really have anything against people lifting stuff. Tesseract there. Whoa. It's a nice sign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know it's so it's so like stupid when uh how cool like a video rental store. It's it's stupid when people uh rip a whole bunch of assets from a game and then sell the uh sell them as texture packs. That's just like ridiculous. <laughs> but I mean it's kind of funny too because there's really nothing the developers can do because Second Life is kind of like its own dark net in a way. I mean I don't think I've ever had anybody come after me in Second Life on any sort of intellectual property except for like s sound samples that have been used. But textures, they're just like totally off the radar pretty much. Discoteca there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I've had a couple of my YouTube videos flagged for, like, audio, ambient audio clips, which was weird, but... Yeah, you'd think 10 seconds, you'd be able to get away with it. I like these car models. Some of these are pretty cool. Oh, the skyline is, is great. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to paste the URL and the SL URL into the chat and the live chat so that anyone who's watching can come and visit. It's like you built this huge sim. Do, I mean, do you, do you get a lot of traffic? I always wonder about that. I mean, I, I guess I could just check it, but... Oh, nice, a homestead. That's cool. Yeah, I know that I know that feeling. <laughs> Real life kinda intercedes a lot of the time. So what's the deal with the ground structure, like the mine shaft type thing?
Oh, we're like in the slums now. Is it like connected to the city in any way, or is it just uh it's just like a separate project kind of ah, I see, oh cool, so it's like an uninhabitable surface zone, basically oh, that's a cool idea. Looks like we got the med bay in here. A little cleaver for chopping up the cadavers or amputations. <laughs> uh oh, somebody left their hand behind. <laughs> oh, whoa, cool. That's a pretty neat uh, little kiosk terminal thing. Nice sound effects. These are cool props. A little SSD that fits into a terminal. I'll have to look sky up after I finish this video. I think Neurolab is like one of the only major sci-fi manufacturers that I'm super familiar with. <laughs> Man, I feel like it's really easy to get lost in the city. I need, like, did you build a, did you write out, like, a map? Yeah, totally. Did you, like, plan all this out, or did you kind of just build it as you went along? Ad lib, cool. Interesting. Looks like there's some billboard stuff up in, th in the sky, huh? I'm just gonna fly up so I can get a sort of a bird's eye view of the whole city plan just to see how it looks like from the sky. Uh, these, uh, these buildings, they remind me of, uh, Like Corbusier's, um, God, I cannot pronounce that guy's name to save my life, but the French architect's, um, cruciform apartment complexes, kind of, with a sort of cyber, cyberpunk spin on them. I think it's kind of funny that uh, there aren't any cities like this really in real life. Like, it's so weird that city technology, just because of the way mega cities sort of sprout up, is, is basically they start with an old city, like an ancient city that's been around for hundreds of years, and then they build onto that and they slowly modernize it over time sometimes it takes you know 200 years before the city is brought up to like 20 20th century standards and then another like 100 years before it's brought into the 21st century this is not currently in use operator command cancel that's cool like a surgeon table Oh, cool. Physical shops, that's cool. It's neat. Holographic display. Always wanted to make something like that for my items. They used to have something cool like that in the golden age of Second Life. Oh, this is cool. It's almost like an an. Oh, it is an analog. It's like a really old analog computer with a holographic display. That's awesome. 
And those are like normal maps too, wow. That's cool. Portable holographic computer. Yeah, let's see who makes this. Ugh, what am I doing? There we go. Ah, Sky Shark, that's that's who who you were talking about earlier. So I think I just wandered into Sky Sh Sky's shop, basically. Cool stuff. Uh, well, if you count my, uh, in worlds videos too for like I don't know at least five years if not longer I mean I used to make static videos before YouTube introduced streaming so like when they first did mesh um, like when S Linden Lab was first introducing mesh I was part of the beta grid and I was a builder there so I used to go to uh, the beta grid and make make videos of builds and stuff and then after that I I got really frustrated as a builder with the land impact because I uh, I used to make pretty big builds and I had a really small piece of land and I always ran out of prims <laughs> and uh, and so then I uh, I ended up like researching other uh, virtual worlds that we're using like the grid platform. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Like, it's it's pretty complicated. Like the algorithms they use, especially like I don't know if if you've ever done any mesh building or importing, but it's like there are so many hacks you can do to bring the land impact way down. I mean, you compromise certain aspects of the the build and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so like I I learned about in worlds, which was basically like a competitor, a direct competitor to Second Life that was using like an open sim grid build. But anyway, to make a long story short, they would um give you a lot more prims. Yeah, yeah, open sim. They gave you a lot more prims for the amount of money that you paid for tier like when you're releasing a, a sim from Linden Labs <coughs> and so like I thought that was really cool but I at the time I was too lazy really to like do a whole sim project so I was just using in worlds a bit trying to get used to their like own unique idiosyncrasies although it's virtually identical it's almost indistinguishable from Second Life Although it has a few, some of their underlying technologies superior, but some of it's inferior too, so I know it's kind of a, a trade-off. Um, but yeah, so I was like, hmm, I think I'm just gonna, like, document some of the sims in InWorlds just for fun because I'd enjoyed doing the beta grid um, exploration when I was trying to like uh, troubleshoot all the mesh mesh stuff when we were trying to roll that out on the grid and uh... I'm just going in circles now <laughs> so yeah, somehow I just can't make a long story short. It's like I make a short story even longer than it already was. And also I feel like like I could spend hours and hours exploring this this city because I'm just 
like quickly going over so much of it. I may like come back here after the video's done and do kind of a closer examination. Here we go, here's an arcade I missed. This looks cool. But yeah, so I started documenting Sims, random s Sims and in worlds, but I quickly discovered that a lot of the Sims and in, in worlds were like really disappointing. I mean, some of them were amazing, but for the most part, like people, I think because it was so much cheaper. Oh yeah, for sure. In fact, there's like a, a new um, like academic discipline now for um, virtual archaeology. I guess like a uh, they're even like teaching classes at like Caltech or something where you can become like a digital archaeologist, and it's it's bizarre. I was speaking of that. It's kind of interesting. I was at a a sim the other day that had um, builds that went all the way back to 2000 and three I think it was is that right I think it was 2003 and I was blown away Linden world prototype no I, I don't think so I uh, that doesn't ring any bells what's Linden world prototype Oh, it's the S SL prototype? Huh, I'd never heard of it. Like, you mean it was something they created before Second Life? Interesting. Huh. No, I can't believe I've never heard of this. I mean, I know about, like, High Fidelity, the new project they're working on. Wow, these are really cool kiosks. I like that blocky, chunky style. It reminds me of, like, a space program. Like, NASA kind of robust. Cool, you got a whole subway station down here, that's pretty awesome. Uh oh. Find the gap, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's just a, a prop, basically. I can't seem to get on board. Ah, uh, yeah. God, trains are hard. I made a few monorails back in the day and it was a real bear making those things easy for people to get into and stuff because of the scale issues. <laughs> of course that was before Mesh so it was all prims back then which was a, n a nightmare in and of itself. Oh yeah, sculpts. God, don't even remind me. <laughs> So this is the secret passage, huh? This is like the behind the scenes Disney World tour. <laughs> oh cool. Oh, is this like the terminal? Or the turnaround kind of? Awesome. And uh, mad respect for building the subterranean as well as the above above ground section of the city that's pretty cool most people when they do like a city design in second life they never go below or above it's just like a, a facade kind of so that's pretty cool that you went all the way Never have a dead end, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a really important design point for, like, a city, because it's really frustrating when you're n wandering around and you end up in a dead end.
and then you just have to go all the way back because the walls aren't phantom. What did you build before this? Like a floating cyber city, kind of? Or was it like on an island? Or just... Oh, an oil rig, cool. Uh, the old classic, um, like, uh, Battle Angel Alita, kind of, the elites in the ivory tower, and then the impoverished, unwashed masses in the basement. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Uh, that's a, it's cool that you brought that up, um, Metropolis. Fritz Lang, I, uh, I learned something really fascinating about that not too long ago, that, uh, they never, they were never able to secure or archive an original full-length copy of that movie. Yeah, like, the, all the original masters got destroyed or damaged. And so they had to, like, cobble together what they thought was, like, the original master. And even in the, the when they did the new edition, it was, like, missing some footage. But they did, like, the best they could to cobble it together. Yeah, it's fascinating, really. I'm actually, it's hilarious, but I'm reading the book right now, which it was written by the woman who was the the heroine in the movie and was also the wife of the Fritz Lang like an actress and an author she wrote Metropolis and you can find it public domain online yeah I'm only like three or four chapters in but that's uh, one of my favorite movies of all time kind of the original fusing of science and magic in sort of a mystical way Yeah, I know. Even like things like Star Wars and stuff, like George Lucas reference Metropolis and stuff. Yeah, for real. Well, uh, thanks for like showing me around your cool city. This is awesome. Thanks for like creating this so that people like me could come and find it and enjoy it. Hopefully you'll get a little more uh, traffic when people see my uh, my live stream. <laughs> I 
All right, well, uh, happy new year, and uh, if you ever want to, like, reach out or whatever, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, after my stream's done completing, I'll, like, CC you um, a link to the archive video so you can, like, I don't know, just have it, share it, whatever. <coughs> yeah, there you go. All right, um, have a good one, man.